This story will cover from then to now and next, all about change, how to turn losers into winners. Epic travels across Europe. Who will fly the farthest? On from the English Channel to the Arctic Circle. In part one, we followed several insect species from the Mediterranean far to the south, as far as the potential barrier, the English Channel, the locust, the hummingbird hawk moth, the painted lady, and the small white. Now along the south coast of the country, from here in the east in Kent, right across to the very far west, the Isles of Scilly, off the tip of Cornwall. Insect migrants are preparing to cross. Some have. The strong seagull can easily fly over the 22 mile, 30 kilometer English Channel to the famous White Cliffs of Dover. But what about weaker insects? even a bumblebee, which aeronautical engineers say technically can't fly. Valerian flowers with lots of nectar. As times and temperatures have changed, so have the fortunes of many insects. Indeed, they are the equivalent of canaries in the coal mine, or rather across the planet. Some are winners, others losers. In the same way that canary birds put in a mine warned of dangerous conditions down there by surviving or not and so can insects warn us of dangers to the planet. Pyramidal orchid is the cower threat, not very selective. No, but here's one cleverly hidden, a funnel spider's trap with a grasshopper on the menu. It's a tiny jungle down here under the gaze of the huge looking cow up above that might happen to eat you. This is where humans migrate or try to, in this case through the channel tunnel and past traveling bumblebees and a day flying moth, the six spot burnet over ox eye or moon daisies, always looking for the next source of nectar. Not a bee this time, but a bee orchid, a design attempting to attract a passing, pollinating real bee. Buddleia globosa, one of the so-called butterfly bushes, popular with many insects and originally from China. Today wildlife travels far and wide, sometimes by its own efforts, but also increasingly introduced by man and this can often lead to trouble for the native species, or sometimes as a welcome addition to biodiversity, possibly being spread by traffic alongside roads and railways. Catching up with insects on the move from the Med, it's to be expected that the famous immigrant, the Painted Lady, has crossed the English Channel on its own wings, though a bit battered in this case. From the White Cliffs near Dover, onto another landfall farther west in South Devon, farmed to the brink and farmed to the bone, a painted lady's eye view of any opportunities left in the landscape. Here's one at Prawl Point now in July, amongst the corn marigolds from the Mediterranean, like the painted lady herself. Another great recent traveller, the peacock, continuing to increase and expand its range in the UK as far as the north of Scotland, the Faroe Isles near Iceland, and is still spreading north in Scandinavia and Finland. Surely the peacock will fly the farthest, as climate change seems to be making this beauty, albeit a little travel-worn, a possible winner to the Arctic Circle. This small white butterfly may have been caught by a bird, possibly a fly-catcher, 
only to get snagged in a spider's web along with other smaller prey. But the Painted Lady is not for turning and has survived so far, heading on northwards from the coast, helped by a following wind, which is helping sailors too. At this vital refueling spot, a bit of waste ground by the sea, though it's not really wasted by the insect traffic. A clouded yellow super migrant with a drone fly. No, not that kind of drone. It's amazing to think these miniature living flying machines can navigate, feed and move on again using their radar antennae and flight refueling, curling proboscis with such success. Butterflies do it, bees do it, drone flies do it, red admirals in the flowers do it. With the warming influence of the Gulf Stream plus worldwide global warming, many insects in the south of England are doing better and in fact are moving north, although there are some exceptions as we'll see. In other words, there are winners and losers in the climate game. The Red Admiral seems to be a winner because it's now actually hibernating in England, whereas previously it was always considered a summer visitor. Now it appears to be a true resident, a welcome addition to our shores. At the far west of southern England is Land's End. All sorts of birds and insects pass this way and bird watchers are often excited about rarities blown off course. A herring gull, a burnet moth and a rose chafer are hardly in this category. Never know your luck. A monarch butterfly that's crossed the Atlantic and famous for its normal travels from North America to Mexico where it hibernates in millions in pine trees. And this one might feel a bit lonely. A hoverfly does much more than hover, reaching St Agnes at the far west of the Isles of Scilly, 30 miles, that's about 45 kilometres, off Land's End. We need lighthouses, but many birds and insects, especially moths, can navigate at night. By day, Bumblebees need warmth to get going, climbing deep into the friendly foxglove for nectar. The speckled wood has benefited from warmth too, spreading north and is helped by the shelter of the hedges around the little bulb fields. The bulbs benefit too from the local mild climate and the Gulf Stream offshore. And customers get their daffodils that bit earlier, at the beginning of the year, possibly taken on the Ceylonian to the mainland. The helicopter doesn't fly here any longer, but many visitors come to the island of Tresco to enjoy the tropical gardens. Robin is warming his rump and trying to cool down by panting. Birds and the bees. And the blackbirds and the sparrow. They're all feeling the heat as our summers get hotter due to global warming. drink, an ice cream, a hummingbird hawk moth, a flying ace, now turning up more and more in people's gardens, 
where if they do notice it, they may think it's a hummingbird, not a day flying moth. With skills like this, wings beating up to 80 times a second, it must be a contender for reaching the far north, perhaps even the Arctic Circle. It eats to the beat. But that's still a very long way to go. And people will be tracking their every move, be it a bird or an insect. Either way, the climate and the weather is in charge. Paddling, not to keep cool, but to stir up food. Not paddling, but panting. To keep cool, try some shade. Gone. Back. Very confusing and hot. But hot helps the case of the painted ladies. It causes a remarkable sequence of events in some years. She lays many tiny eggs on nettles amongst the stinging spines. And many more join in on nettles and thistles. Hardly rare food plants for the caterpillars which will hatch soon. Then the adults move on to nettles and thistles new. laying a generation of baby ladies and their very baby next to a pinhead. And green fly. It eats its way out of the eggshell and then it's down to work for four weeks. Across England now, in midsummer, the Budley bushes live up to their name, attracting many migrants. Painted ladies passing on north, small tortoiseshells, a winner and a loser. Everyone's interested these days. A silver wine moth, perhaps from North Africa. Various long range flies. And those whites we've followed a cabbage fan and of course the irresistible hummingbird hawk moth buzzing on his way north now regularly hibernating in the UK the lady is calmer also sipping one floret at a time that make up the flowers and the bushes that really help them on their way actually many specially bred garden flowers are rather sterile and don't have much to offer a passing insect in the way of flight refueling Soon to be decorating English gardens is the continental race of the beautiful, exotic-looking swallowtail. There are more meadow browns moving to the north. Same with the comma, so-called because of that punctuation mark on the underneath, on its hind wings. And there are some possible losers, like the silver wash fritillary, whose woodlands may be cut down. At least they may be lucky in love, courting over the car park in a valued nature reserve. From the tiny painted lady eggs to caterpillars that have eaten hugely, and become the next stage, the chrysalis, now about to hatch. There's a bit of a wing, antennae, plus eye, plus curled proboscis. And almost ready for takeoff. 
as successive waves of painted ladies lay, feed and hatch on their way north, it's beginning to look like one of those painted lady years. And how far will they reach? As far as the tundra of the Arctic Circle, Eden? And on they go, from buttercup level to hedgerow height, up to the treetops and beyond to wild Scotland, where there's a bit of a loser. This is tundra, but in Scotland, where the changing climate is causing a problem for a rather specialised butterfly, Ben Law's Nature Reserve shelters a species that is being pushed up the mountain to the top as the climate changes. The retreating mountain ringlet is running out of space as its home gets too hot to handle because of CO2 emitted from burning fossil fuels many miles from the top of its tundra last resort. Another example of a butterfly, not a canary in the coal mine, another warning from the wild about what we are doing to the weather and the climate. It's a moth trap, a light at night. This is a week's catch. Sometimes it's quite full, other times it's almost empty. Today it's intermediate. What we've got today, there's quite a mixture of species there. There must be at least a dozen different species, some of them very attractive. He's actually telling you about, uh, uh, about the possible link to temperature change and, and uh, global climate change? Well, they're very sensitive to, to small changes in temperature and, 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 uh, and rainfall, and also to management of the site. And, and so they're a very good indicator of, uh, of changes that would make be very difficult to pick up in other ways. For species and when they appear and how many they are, um, it tells us a lot about how things are varying across the country. This, there's a network of these sites across the whole of the UK, you see, and, so, and, and the, the data go back for decades. So we have a, a terrific record of the, the micro changes that are taking place in the, in, in the environment. To Sweden. To rain and then blue sky. The summer, sort of, is home to the common and arctic terns, the world champion global migrant spending summers at both ends of the planet and flying every year between the two. Their lives may be changed by global warming because of us and our emissions. Yes, the snow is melting, and earlier at both poles, and the sea ice is thinning above the Arctic Circle, more each summer. And the insects respond to the heat of the sun, hatching, feeding and breeding. Joining them from 3,000 miles, that's over 4,000 kilometres away, from sun-scorched North Africa, a painted lady butterfly would be the winner of the farthest flyer competition. Outflying the locust, the small white butterfly, even the hummingbird hawk moth, 
Perhaps next year, one or more may make it too, as the Arctic warms up. Birds like blue throats benefit from this summer bonanza of insect food. In this fast-changing world of hot and cold, land and sea, some will be winners and some will be losers. Let's hope we can turn losers into winners.